I just want to say I was, I was promised a lavalier and a zip line, so I'm, uh, I'll do the best I can with my limitations. <laughs> and I hope I, I can make this. My name is Hugo Fernandez. I'm an assistant professor of photography and visual arts here at LaGuardia Community College. And this is going to be a little discussion about my father. I was looking for a typeface that could mirror as much of I Love Lucy as possible. And you'll understand why uh, in a minute. I needed the heart. So will this work? It didn't, I don't know, I don't think so. Is it the other way? Okay, one on the right, and I have. Uh, this is my father, uh, Wilfredo Fernandez. He's a 95-year-old Cuban exile uh, at his favorite restaurant in Union City, El Artesano. Check it out. It's authentically Cuban. He uh, lives in an apartment in the west side uh, where he was a super for about 50 years. They finally made him retire. Uh, it's about a one-room studio. And uh, I pick him up typically uh, on the weekends. And uh, we drive, with or without my, uh, my wife and daughter, uh, like I said, to Union City. And uh, we eat. And uh, you can know, I just want to point out a couple of pieces of jewelry. The big W... And I think that one of these things is a laser, right? Is that a laser? And also over there, this Indian head ring, which I had to replace. It used to be brass. I got him a silver one. Uh, here we go. If I don't see him at least once every three weeks, this happens. Uh, you know, he went to the doctor. The coldest period of the winter fell down. Blood pressure was down to 60, uh, frozen hands, so they put him in, they put him in for a few days. So, uh, but the truth is, he loves it. Uh, you know, the nurses take care of him, he gets his food. He would never leave if they didn't make him. So, uh, there you have it. This is where most of us would like to see him, which is in northern Florida, my sister's house, uh, where she has a, a kind of a farm, chickens, dogs but he would never have it. He's been a city guy his whole life, and he just tells me there's no action. So he refuses to, uh, to retire. So when I get together with him, uh, particularly in the last 10 years, what I've done is I've tried to document a lot of uh, the stories he's told me all his life. Uh, initially, I was trying to do it in video, and I found audio was less, uh, you know, he, uh, he was freer to speak without posing for the camera, uh, in a sense. Uh, my, sometimes my wife uh, comes with us, which is good because then he talks to other people. I get other people in the pictures. Uh, in this case, you see he's, uh, he's very animated. And I'm going to try to get the video on this to go uh, right now. But of course, because I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able, am I going to be able to click on this now that it's using this? I don't think so, is it? Let's see. Does it allow me to, what has it done? Okay. I'm trying to animate the video, but I guess it's not going to happen. That's going to be a problem. Uh, oh, excuse me. I'll go back. Wait a minute. There should be a way to... Should I have checked this, Richard, before? Okay, excuse me. I'd hope to get it to play. Uh, so we'll be missing the video as well. Uh, now this won't work either. <laughs> Next. I'll live with that. Uh, my daughter gets into the pictures every once in a while. Uh, there he is in his apartment. Uh, he's got a lot of musical instruments. Uh, he loves her. He, he, the question is always, will she be with us? And uh, he'd rather see her than me. My sister comes, uh, she's about nine years older than me. Uh, this is, we went into uh, New Jersey to uh, visit his brother's grave uh, out there. Uh, and every once in a while he goes back down to Florida. I come along sometimes. This is my mother, his second wife. Uh, and they get together and talk about medications, things like that. Uh, so... Oh, this is also an important family member, his cardiologist. He has about four stints in his heart. Uh, and so you can see I've, I've, uh, what I've tried to do is document his life 
uh, as best I can. And here again, we have a video that I'm not going to be able to show unless I make it do something else. Uh, so I put together this uh, project and last mission. And uh, the issue, one of the big problems is that because he's 95, he cannot travel. Ideally, I would take him to Cuba. And I'm in the process of trying to get him a visa. But his fear is that just recently, uh, old Cuban gentleman who got arrested for trying to blow something up. And so he's afraid that he'll, he'll be arrested uh, as well. And so the, the project has to take other directions. Uh, what I've been doing is now mining a lot of the family snapshots and trying to write down a lot of these stories, transcribing some of our discussions. Uh, so here's a little something I found in my sister's house. Uh, my father has always tried to play secret agent, so I look at this as like kind of our man in Havana kind of outfit. Uh, but this one I found the other day, a negative of his check boxes. Are you going to try to play my video? Oh, sorry. Okay. Too bad. You're going to give me another mic? Testing. Thank you. Uh, this is shortly after arriving uh, from Cuba in 59 or 60. Back there, actually, you can see the New Yorker uh, movie theater where Annie Hall, that scene where they get into the argument about pontificating in a movie line, that's where it was shot. And, uh, but this is my father, the image he would like to have sent the world, always in suits, uh, possibly a secret agent of some kind. Uh, one of the many passport pictures of the... And he, you know, he propagated the, the lizard tie, for example. Uh, the refrain that his friends used to say in Cuba was, you don't want us to send Wilfredo. Uh, here's one of his uh, many passport shots. I like to get my hands on these to see the places he's gone. Uh, shortly after the revolution, he was involved in a lot of anti-Castro activity, uh, though I don't know if it would show up on this particular one. Uh, and he's, there's all these stories he tells, uh, you know, all different. This is a particular... Uh, telling to a journalist about how he was involved with burying the body of the only uh, German spy, Nazi spy, to be killed in the Western Hemisphere, Agent Zero. Uh, once again, our man in Havana, this very inept spy who uh, was caught and uh, paraded in front of a lot of secret agents types and then eventually uh, killed. This is my memories of my father in my life coming certain weekends. Uh, he always lived here. We always lived somewhere else. Uh, strange to see him smoking. He rarely did. I doubt that's me uh, at the time. I've been finding things like this that he almost throws out. Uh, this is his license when he was a chauffeur driving a bus in Cuba, uh, which is where he kind of like made his bones politically. Uh, he became uh, a union rep. By the way, he met my mother driving the bus, uh, d driving his bus. The, the story is he used to, when he figured out when she'd go to work, he'd wait for her, and he'd turn off the engine, and, and the other bus, bus occupants would say, hey, well, uh, is there something wrong with the bus? And he'd say, oh, yeah, it's broken, I don't know. And the minute she'd get on, he'd turn it on, and off they went. Uh, this is his union card, where he got most of his political activities. Uh, this is... Uh, here from the bus drivers, but he was part of the most powerful Cuban Union, uh, the CETC, the uh, uh, Conf Confederation of Trabajadores uh, uh, Cubano. Uh, so, uh, well, who some people think were in league with Batista, but there are other opinions as well. This is 19, circa 1920. Uh, my grandmother in the center, my aunt. Uh, his older sister to the left, and my father, who was like a bit of a feral child uh, running in the streets. This is the image, this is the reality, uh, though this is obviously 1919, his actual uh, birth, and uh, you know, the, the picture for the postcards. So, to kind of give you kind of an idea of what I'd like to do, and I'm going to, when I finish with this, I'm going to see if I can get the video to one last shot, and then I might have to call it. Uh, I want to read a little something I wrote up because my notion is now to, along with a lot of the images I've been taking of him over the last 30 years, uh, is to compile it with some of these snapshots from the family 
and tell some of these tales, which are, you know, all over the place uh, in a sporadic way. But here, once again, so this is probably 1969, 70, my sister with my father in either in some apartment in New England when we lived in Boston for about three years. And this is a little something I'm writing in to, to make us a, a part of it. Uh, my sister was a child of the 60s, and by the early 1970s was going to college at Boston University. In her excitement at learning new ideas that contradicted her parents' vision of the world, she invited my father to her political science class to meet her leftist professor. For an hour, the professor and my father argued before her classmates over the issues of Latino struggles in the Western Hemisphere. For every point her teacher had, my father had his right-wing counterpoint. Finally, in exasperation, the professor said, well, what about Che? What can you say against Che Guevara? These were the big guns, Che, the paradigm of leftist idealism and self-sacrifice. To this day, the Cuban school children still pledge allegiance with the phrase that one day, I will grow up to be just like Che. My father answered without pause, Che, he was a killer. The professor responded, how can you say that? How can you say that about Che? Because, my father replied, I was standing there and Che said, okay, you guys stand against the wall. Then he said to the firing squad, okay, you guys shoot them. The lecture was over, class dismissed. My sister would leave BU in 72 and finish her BA in kindergarten education at the University of Miami, Suntan U. By the 90s, she was a born-again Christian and married to a chaplain whose flock is made up of Latino grooms who raise thoroughbreds on ranches in northern Florida, horse country. She doesn't believe in global warming or Obamacare and is waiting for the rapture and her father to come. So I'll give it one more chance and see if I can. By the way, Joni, how, how would I, does anybody know how to unplug this thing so I don't have to deal with it? On the side. This little gray thing? Okay, let's get that out and I'll try it one more time from here. I just want to play you. This is a little teaser that I created uh, to uh, push my show that I did last year and Maybe it's, uh, hopefully it'll be a fitting way to end it. All right, there it is.